Hello, my name is Abe and welcome back to Enter the Gungeon Run. Today runs, I mean, we've been playing a lot of this game lately and today we're going to be playing as the pilot. I will play as the pilot. And for anyone who wants to play along with me, you can play as the pilot yourself or if you want to play another character, you can play as the cultist. If you don't know how to, I mean this, no, 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 this is not what I meant. I meant to change outfits. If you don't know how to do it, uh, you need mod the gungeon and then it's something like character cultist, character co-op underscore cultist, something to that effect. I'm not entirely certain myself. You figure it out, you're a smart person. But we're gonna be playing as the pilot. No bcdd 20 t because no. And that's all I need. As far as a, a answer to the question of why, the, the, the re answer to why is why? Just with a different inflection on it. But I hope everyone's having a good day. I'm having a decent day myself. I'm feeling pretty decent. I don't yet have a headache today. Yesterday on my run, I was talking about it. I had recently had a little bit of dental work done, so I had a headache. My jaw was sore. Not so much today, but you know, it's a slow process of, of starting to feel better once again in my own skull. But I might at some point get a little bit uh, headachey. And if that happens, well, I got coffee, I got Tylenol, and I know that caffeine increases the effectiveness of that effectiveness of acetaminophen. Science! But I'm happy to do a pilot run today. I feel like the extra purchasing power from our starting passive item uh, would have been appreciated on the recent... I don't know a, a synonym with run that begins with the letter P, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wanted to keep the alliteration going, but I couldn't. I've failed you. Uh, boxing glove, man, just like, uh, just the worst weapon. Maybe not the literal worst weapon, but it might as well be the worst weapon. I don't know, what happens if I punch, star punch the boss? I mean, dude, that did like half of his health of damage. That's pretty okay. For a weapon I absolutely hate using, I will take that. If we are... Maybe a little bit careful. Oh, that didn't count? Do you have to get all three charges of the, of the boxing gloves to actually get the damage bonus or something? Look, we'll figure it out. This is the reason why I don't use the boxing glove. I don't understand how to use it, fundamentally, as an item. But when there's only one trigger twin here in turbo mode, it's a little bit more feasible to flawless it. I believe his pattern is, oh, okay, I was gonna say pretty consistent and then he did something else, so definitely not pretty consistent. I don't wanna get close enough to him to use the uh, the weapon, because if I do, he could just end up hitting me, but let's get that flawless instead. Make sure that we keep the no-hit run going for a while. Hmm. 50 credits I love. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. now that's a gun. And, and, dude, if we can keep the Polaris charged up, get to W, in, well, what I call W3, permanent W3 action, we could maybe get to a point where we use this weapon for the entire run, get infinity damage, never take a hit, get that flawless run under our belt, which we have yet to pick up since coming back to, uh, to the gungeon. There's our uh, W2. Remember everyone, tax season, right around the corner. Make sure you get your W2s in the mail. Omega says, I hate boxing glove, can't use it without taking a bunch of damage. Its range is also terrible, and then on top of that, it's also cursed. It's like one of the worst weapons in the actual game. Not something that we're gonna want on this run. Now, I do see that there are some pretty good items in our shop, 
in, and we have the money to buy them. In particular, if we really wanted to do a no-hit run, well, we could just take the auto-blanking, and then we will automatically blank if we take damage, but that's cheating. I, I do not abide by, ooh, already W3. Weapon level three, haha. <laughs> That's cheating, I'm not gonna do that. I might take the Holy Grail though, even though, even though we quite possibly do not need it. Okay, this is gonna be a fun run. Because if we never, ever, ever take damage, why do we need that? Dude, I also love the fact that if we had the money, we could get the jacket blank synergy. Look at that. Mm. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to... I'm gonna buy the Elder Blank and then spend 42 on keys. Now, I still have not had the other water barrel up here, or maybe it, it showed up and then I just kind of walked past it. Because we need a water barrel in order to walk it into this room, since I did break the one that was in the room. Well, I didn't do it, it was the dynamite bulletkin, but I didn't think about it during the, the time in which it happened. So if we can find one good, if not, we're gonna have to skip out on the, uh, on the Abbey, unfortunately, but I don't know where the secret room is. I don't know where the other water barrel is. And at this point, we might just have to say, dude, no access. I'm gonna spend another minute looking though. We got time. It could be in, let's do this. It could be in this room. No. It's not in this room. I think. I think we're I think we're done. I think we're out. We're gonna go to level two. We don't have any other method of creating goop. Technically science can and apply status effects, but it's not goop. It's just a beam that applies status effects. I would need like a blob in that room or something, but there were no blobs in that room, I don't think. Unless I'm just missing it, I don't see it. Yeah, I kind of always hate when this happens, because I very much love going into the, uh, into the abbey floor, but I mean, if we can't, we can't. We'll just, uh, we'll move on. All right, fair enough. Bulletkins broke the barrel. Well, it was the dynamite bulletkin that blew up the one in the room. And uh, if there was a second barrel that got broken, I didn't notice. I was not paying enough attention, unfortunately. Already a beautiful run, says Ellington team. It is, mostly that's just because of uh, Polaris here, which is going to be, especially with Metronome, just an absolutely absurdly powerful weapon. Elder Blank will keep us a little safer. Our run is fantastic. Uno Oubliette and Abby is boring. What a shame, says Sarah Lemonade. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm still hopeful that maybe we can, uh, we can do a no-hit run, but I mean, come on. If you're doing a no-hit run, do no-hit down to the Abbey. Fight the old king, right? This gun is gonna be doing so much damage by the end of this. Run, run ruined, wrap it up, end the stream, says Maman. I mean, I would. Are, are you okay with that? I can like, you know, go uh, make some dinner, have a snack, hang out with my loved ones. No Oubliette is quite, quite rare, says Ellington team. I mean, this is when it happens. It happens when you get your water barrel shot and you don't have another way of accessing it. it. I thought, and again, I didn't notice another water barrel, but I believe that there's always two on the floor. But sometimes that second one spawns inside of the exit. So you can't access it without a water barrel to begin with. 
Oh, hello. Yellow Chamber could be quite interesting, but I don't really want that much curse. Sour Lemonade says, I've been completely addicted to Nuclear Throne lately, trying to get infinite ammo fish run with Lucky Shot and Recycle Gland. I'm not a big fan of Lucky Shot because it doesn't really give you that much ammo for your primary weapons, I think, the ones that you're holding, because the weapons you, the ammo you get is random. For me, I love the idea of getting an infinite ammo run with steroids because his throne butt gives you so much ammo. Ah, we'll keep up the pulse cannon. Oh, okay. That's been my goal. But like the past four times I tried to play steroids in Nuclear Throne, his throne butt never appeared as an option and I was very sad. Look at that. How did he know? How did he know? I bet you restart the stream and play Nuclear Throne instead. I can play some Nuclear Throne later if people want it, but you gotta vote for it. Jelly Twitcher just says, Radical Beam, man! No, you mean Reticule Beam. Reticule Beam. There's a callback. Dynamite destroyed one, bullet can shot the other. Well, I didn't see the other one, okay? I didn't see it. At least we still have the rat floor. As long as we get the money for it, I don't have a way of stealing right now. Uh-oh, should not have reloaded. <laughs> Dude, with the Polaris, this is essentially infinite ammo. This is the fish run. All right, I'm also gonna do some cheese strat. The cheese is if you drop metronome and pick up your, or swap to your other weapon, you get to keep your metronome bonus. There's the cheese. Dude, look at our damage. Just very slow shots out of the Polaris. Rainbow Zombie Man, welcome. The reason why Gungeon should win Game of the Year in every category is simply you see people enter the Gungeon all the time, never have we seen anyone exit. We don't talk about that one time. Once you enter the Gungeon, you cannot leave. I saw some of the... Meh. I saw some of the uh, categories for like Steam Game of the Year or whatever like it, it was and it's like, just absolutely the wrong games for the categories. It's kind of unfortunate. Um, I don't have any examples off the top of my head because I forgot what they all are, but give me a minute and I'll think about some. I mean, I don't know, I'll get six keys, why not? Go down to the next floor, let's do it. Hold on, I gotta actually let the elevator take me down. Steam Game of the Year. The Steam Awards. Vote now. Would you like... <laughs> what is this, Football Manager 2024 as the Game of the Year? <laughs> or Lethal Company? No, those are not Games of the Year. Would you like... <laughs> Apex Legends as the Labor of Love Award or Dota 2? <laughs> no, those are not Labor of Love worthy. Who's voting for these games? You weren't even nom nominated for Streamer of the Year, says Jelly Twitcher. Now that's a damn shame. Maybe like Gungeon Streamer of the Year, even though I didn't stream it for half the year, but who's really streaming Gungeon anymore? Are there any other like top tier Gungeon streamers today? I don't want to be that guy, but, uh, you know, maybe I'm just the only one who can appreciate the, the masterfulness of this game, and maybe everyone is just losing their goddamn minds. Baldur's Gate won Game of the Year. I mean, the, the way I think about Game of the Year is I guess I think about it more as like, 
Time Magazine's Person of the Year. It doesn't have to be someone who actually was good, it just has to be something that was very memorable. Like, the most memorable thing for the year. You would think that it would be, uh... Maybe... You know, like... Elden Ring, since everyone's still talking about the DLC for that game, but... I suppose it had to have been released in 2023. Okay, you got me. Do you think I should do a of the year in Abe Clancy Gaming? Like, what I've played, what I've looked at, what I've enjoyed the most? I haven't really played that much out of stream time or YouTube time. Mostly it's been, if I play it, you see it. But maybe I should I should do you know more lists list based content here on the Abe Clanchy channel. I still need to do a list of uh, you know Gungeon items or whatnot. I never did that. I cheated so many people out of their hard earned lists. Yeah, Baldur's Gate three. Like I can actually see that one winning Game of the Year because it's a game that is a. It's basically a, I know it has multiplayer, but it's basically a single player story based RPG that is exceptionally well received and deep and people love it. And people have talked about it and it got good reviews. So I can, I can see that being up there, you know? But Labor of Love, Dota 2? <laughs> I don't know if I believe that one, okay? It's a trash cannon. Dump metronome. Go to Polaris, pick it up. I know that um, Sour Lemonade says, I haven't been able to do the metronome cheese. It just reset the counter. You have to drop metronome first, then you drop the gun, or then you swap your guns, then you pick up the metronome. I, I've, I don't think I've ever had it not work. Your mom know about my labor of love, says Jelly Twitcher. Yeah, for all of two seconds. <laughs> Helen Week 2 did something, but I forgot what. It says Sour Lemonade. You know, the, the, the interesting thing is, Alan Wake 2 was a, was a release that happened, and then nothing happened with it. Like, I heard everyone talking about it, well, like, wow, Alan Wake 2, that, that's hopefully gonna be so good. And then it came out and everyone said, oh, that's so good, and then that's it. Like. I, I don't I don't know what else happened with that game. Like it it dropped, it released, and then everyone moved on, I feel. I don't understand at all. So the fact that that was kind of up there on the on the game of the year lists and whatnot, I was like, was it really that like popular and well received, or is it just because it was r relatively recent? I don't know. I never even played Alan Wake once. So I should play that one before I play Alan Wake 2. Sapphire Wolf, welcome. Love your monster train. It's the first time catching one of your streams. Well, thank you for the kind words and thank you for your uh, kind views. I like monster train as well. I haven't played a lot of it lately. I am in the mood for like a deck builder, but I feel like I wanna play a new game. So I've got some in mind that I'm gonna be checking out soon, do some let's look at of them. They should be going up on YouTube relatively shortly. I just have to do a whole bunch of editing work and re-recording of a couple of things. I flubbed some lines. So drop the metronome, pick up the Polaris, put the metronome, and we're good. Disposable has a new favorite viewer. <laughs> uh, allow me to introduce you. Doctor, 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 doctor. Um, what are we gonna do here? I guess we have a lot of HP. Let's go pick up the remaining HP. You can vote for Monster Train in the polls as disposable. If I put it on the poll, maybe I'll, uh, Maybe I'll refuse. Maybe you won't get any monster train ever again. It's done! Alan Wake streams made me replay control, says Maman. 
I really liked Control. I really liked the world building and the character building in that game. My problem with Control is that the act, when you get down to the actual gameplay, like the combat, combat kind of sucks. It's jank and weirdly sticky, and it feels like, ironically, you don't have that much control over your character sometimes. Uh, I forgot her name immediately. We'll call her, uh, We'll call her uh, Roxanne. Roxanne doesn't control the way you want her to sometimes. It's like, move left, Roxanne! Dodge! <laughs> Jesse Faden, I like Roxanne better, because I can say, Roxanne! Something, something, red light! Roxanne! If it was less jank, I think I would I would like it more. But I really like the game. The humor was good. Um, I know some people don't like those types of logs where it's like a um, a video log where you gotta sit down and and watch it. But I I kind of liked it because it fits like the universe, I think, to see the characters acting out in this like very uh, straightforward manner when they're talking about all these like weird things like, and we sometimes launched a pencil out of this floppy disk and it's like, okay, they're, you know, they're very excited, they're scientists. I like that acting component. But um, I do wish that for the audio logs in that game, you could play it and walk off, but you can't because when you, interact with the audio log in the world and then you walk away, it gets quieter. It's like, just play it. I, I can hear it. Let me, let me, let me hear it. Firewolf says, Gungeon is also fun, especially seeing someone way more skilled than I am at the game. I mean, statistically speaking, I am more skilled at Gungeon than literally every person in chat. Statistically speaking, I'm probably better than anyone watching this video on YouTube. Past, present, or future. St statistically speaking, I doubt anyone watching my videos of Gungeon will be better at the game than I am. I've played way too much of this freaking game. The cool thing would be if someone actually better than me was watching it, and then I'd be, and then they were responded a comment, and then we could have like, a, you know, build up a uh, a friendly rivalry, find a way to do seeded runs, and we can see who can survive the run. That'd be fun. Good times. Honestly, there you go. Now we don't have to worry about it. Are you sure mud isn't better? This is Academy Kill. You know, something that we sh that I should do at some point, and something I've been wanting to do, is uh, more multiplayer games. I um, I got to admit, I've been having a good time playing games with uh, Mother of Zerg. He's a really fun dude to play with, and uh, mud as well. I think it would be really fun to get him in on like some Gungeon co-op, but. He's currently not even here right now. He's currently uh, traveling. He's at home, so he's not even at his computer. <laughs> what a what a loser! Am I right? Spending time with his family? Ugh. Who would want that, right? Not me. I'll just be here streaming and making videos for the internet. <laughs> ah, there's our W three. That's a challenge, I would lose it, but just to be sure. <laughs> Yonk. Don't telefrag me. Thank you.
All right. Don't forget I actually have that in my pocket, but. Ooh, Jesus. For the most part, just, you know, shoot the gun forehead. Because it takes so few bullets to kill anything, we get ammo back due to the ammo synthesizer, and the ammo back that we get is gonna be like... <laughs> the ammo back that we get is gonna be just so, uh, so much in relation to the ammo we spent killing everything. And of course we get the heroin, because uh, why not? Academy Kill says if we talk Gungeon knowledge, I'll win by a landslide. Give me some, uh, give me some, give me a pop quiz. Come on. Let me test my Gungeon knowledge. Can't wait for someone on YouTube to show up and say, man, it's always nice seeing new people play Gungeon. I took a break from my 137 no hit streaks. This reminds me of the simpler days. The the fact of the matter is, is that you, you can't really win, you, you can't no hit streak that much in Gungeon. Because there are times in this game where you just get telefrag. So I, uh, but if we're talking win streaks, you know, basically, uh, dust off shoulder, I stop counting. I don't think, is there any game where people do like no hit streaks in it? Other than like, I don't know, Minesweeper? <laughs> Fundamentally, it's a hit, it's a no hit streak, right? If you could develop a Gungeon sequel, what would you add, remove, change? Uh, add more guns and synergies and crazy bullet effects. You know, I want to see I want to see out of like a Gungeon two, Isaac levels of nonsense. I want to see babies float around the screen, spawning more babies, floating into enemies, holding giant knives, you know? I want synergies. That's what I want. And I want it now! So here's a little bit of a uh, strategy. Go on the outside, weaken them all, that way they're easier to kill individually. And then when you just got one, just kill them, forehead. Yeah, where's the lol random bullet? I mean, that exists in this game, but it's like an A-level item and you only see it once every 800 runs. That's what I mean, like you need more, you need more crazy stuff happening on these runs, but it never happens. Hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, okay, we're gonna play the shrine. Robbed plus shielded. <sighs> the shrine just stole like 800 bucks from me. <laughs> well, no, it stole like 300. And I got like one armor out of it, so, oh, it's so good. Wonderful even. Dude, I'm dropping the turret. I want my money back, so if we get a shop later, we can do something with it. And then, we're gonna dump the trash gun and the third party gun. We're gonna dump boxing glove. I'm gonna dump third party. I know we could gun munch. I don't really care to gun munch right now. There you go. And we're out of here. It's gonna be a bit of a fast run. Yeah, what a steal! There's a community dedicated to no hitting all seven FromSoft games in a row, says Milt Thompson. I, I heard that someone did it for the first three Souls games. I don't know if they did it with Bloodborne, but I did hear that someone spent like 400 hours trying to no hit the Souls games, and then they eventually did it, and now they're like, okay, now I gotta do it adding Sekiro to the mix. And I'm just like, okay, that's that's too much. So I guess, yeah, I guess there is a, I guess it's not a streak, but it might as well be a seven streak. I'm not interested in doing that, just for the record. Don't expect, uh, you know, Dark Souls no-hit runs. 
Dino Zingle has five in a row here on Twitch. Like five Souls games in a row? Doing it at soul level one, oh Jesus. I guess like the thing is, Souls games are very pattern based, right? All the bosses and the enemies have very explicit patterns and you can exploit that. You, you know where to move and where to dodge after a while. In the end, really the only thing that you have to adjust run after run is just for the little RNG. Like, oh, this enemy, instead of doing their upper, their uh, light attack, they did a heavy attack and it just lined up perfectly with another attack that was coming in and I just, I forgot, I didn't see it happening. And, you know, you can flaw, they would be able to flawless every boss. It's like the run up to the boss, which is the problem. Like, oh, for some reason, this enemy didn't want to, you know, get away from the balcony. And so, because they were on the balcony, I got hit. That's my assumption, anyways. Come here! Thank you. Hey, Lydia, welcome. Where's the Celeste no-hit run? Have you finished your Celeste no-hit run, or are you still working on it yourself? I'll put that, uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll put that under the category of, all right, if you want me to do a challenge, you gotta do it yourself first. <laughs> Cause otherwise, I'll be playing everyone's dumb challenges. Well, it's not a dumb challenge. I'm just saying that. Shock rounds we can buy, and then honestly, the Eye of the Beholster gun is pretty interesting. Wave beam, actually, Brick Breaker would be the cool synergy here. We can probably buy that later. We have a ton of keys. I wouldn't mind Bracket Key. Also synergizes with Polaris to make it even better. I knew that. Lydia says PB1, AKA, she's managed to beat Celeste only dying once. I can't go back, I'm scared, she says. I'm uh, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you're almost there. I'm sure one more and you'll get it. Okay, I gotta I gotta clear the bullets, man. No! I swapped weapons! I'm a dummy. I'm gonna go to my wave beam. Although that looks pretty sick. Did you complete the no hit run, says Jelly Twitcher. I, uh, I think Lydia's probably better at Celeste than I am, but you know, I've gotten my share of no hit runs in that game. Like, uh, not no hit runs, I'm sorry. Uh, my share of golden berries. You know, I completed Oh, it's the Kiln Synergy. I completed Hollow Knight. Absolute Radiance, complete the Fifth Pantheon, etc., etc. I've done it. Mill Thompson says, at one point, he no-hitted Elden Ring, soul level one, like 12 times in a row. Considering in that game, you can probably go from the beginning to the end pretty quickly. That actually makes a little bit of sense. You know, there's probably a path through that game where you can get to the final boss super quickly. It's pretty impressive. Apparently DS2 is the real effort to beat consistently, says Milt Thompson. Sour Lemonade says, I love runs where you just super buff one gun constantly. I mean, this run is uh, exceptionally strong. We did get the Kiln Synergy. It's just such a powerful run. We have so many positive things. This is not a very good weapon to be using, but that's kind of why I'm using it. Please do an infinite glass guanstone run. I mean, the, we can do that kind of now. The problem is 
we are out of time. Like, we only have one more floor left. Maybe we can get, like, 10 Guan Stones, but we're not gonna get infinite Guan Stones, unfortunately. You know, if this was floor two, I'd be like, okay, let's see how many we can get. But we gotta start with those. So there's two. I, you know, I wanna use bracket key as well sometimes. I've been dying to see it says Sour Lemonade. I've had, I've had runs where I've had like 40 Guan Stones before and still been hit. It doesn't make you invincible. Unfortunately, rip. All right, let's, uh, is there anything else that we want? I guess the answer is no. Spawn and clone, go back to floor one. I'm not gonna do that. Let's get the um, brick breaker, because that's gonna be very funny. Jelly Twitcher says, I just need Farewell Berry. I didn't get the Farewell Berry. I only played through that level once to complete it. I don't even know how to get the, the berry in that one. I don't even know if I want to try to get the berry in that one. That just seems painful. Like, norm it took me eight hours, I think, to beat Farewell. I it's not gonna take me eight hours to beat it again, but I don't know if I wanna go through that. Lydia says I didn't like Farewell. I liked it good enough. I liked it well enough. Superman liked it good enough. Don't change weapons. It's, uh, it is kind of a little overly long and overly difficult, but that's kind of the point. It's supposed to be tough. All right, we need a better weapon for this. Let's go to the heroin real quick. Some janky room rooms. I, I don't mind janky rooms, but it's I wouldn't want to do it no hit. <laughs> I would not want to do it no hit. I kinda I I liked farewell though in Celeste because it was kinda like just a big puzzle. How do you get through this room? Hmm. Oh, I bet I could do this, and then you try it and it doesn't work, so you have to like figure out what to do differently to change it. And then like the second half of it, it's like, okay. You have to jump and then throw, and then press up and jump, and then press up to throw, or press up to release in order to release it in, in like the perfect moment, and it's just a little finicky with the button presses. I like the puzzle elements to it, and the, the janky rooms are fun, but the fiddly button presses, like the, the perfect button presses, gets to be a little much. I did like it, though. I did like it. I liked it a lot. Um, shift, rack key, L to blank. All right. Is this run still no hit so far? Yeah, I mean, I haven't been focusing on it, but I don't think we've been hit. I lost my metronome, but we can build that back up. It was post game like super challenging, so I enjoyed it, says Jelly Twitcher. I, I liked how in, what was it? Core Seaside in Celeste, the game actually tutorializes special mechanics, like speedrun mechanics. Like the, the hyper dash or whatever the hell it's called. I find that to be very amusing. It's like, by the way, you need to know how to cheese the game's physics engine in a weird way in order to do this room. Elder blank. Game's hard, man. Didn't take you close to 10 hours for, for, for farewell, says Jelly Twitcher. I think it was eight 
but I haven't, I haven't counted, so I don't know how long it actually took. It took quite a while. I mean, that's understandable. I think it's supposed to take like eight hours. It's up on YouTube if someone wants to, if you're so inclined and you're curious, you can just count up the, the videos. Just go look at the playlist. I will always remember um, Omega Vepin. Haven't seen him in a while. That dude was like, I gotta go. You've been playing this farewell level for a while. Can you just like win so I can like go to bed? And I'm like, okay, I'll win. And then I won. <laughs> I did it for him. Lydia says, Meat Boy 106 redo next. Lydia, you have uh, you have given me the desire to play Blasphemous. So I, I wanna do that at some point. I didn't know that it, it got a sequel. I never played the original. I hear good things about it. I might try that at some point. What? Oh, thank you, dog. There you go. Hey Lydia, do I have a game for you? Uh, do you like farming? <laughs> you should check out Atomacross. And the funny thing is, I'm not actually like really memeing. It's a very enjoyable game. I found myself liking it. More than I thought I would. Not Atomacross. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't you like the farm? The kids yearn for the fields. I watch you play and I can't tell what's going on. Yeah, that's why you gotta, <laughs> you gotta learn for yourself. <laughs> it might be one of the most chaotic games I've ever played. I kind of feel like that's part of the charm though. Okay, he wasn't jammed, so I didn't get hit by him. This is one of the hardest rooms to get through without taking damage. Just due to the uh, assholishness of the enemies. You know what I should have done? Walk in with a bracket key, forgot about it. I'll do it here. If anyone, by the way, has any other ideas for games you want me to play, let me know, because there's a few I want to check out myself. Like, relatively new games that came out. Some old games that I want to play through, like Blasphemous. Uh, I've been wanting to maybe play through some games that I, I never did play through, but have always been recommended. Like, I don't know, Wizard of Legend, uh, One Step from Eden, both very good games. I wouldn't mind picking up some new stuff. Rather, old stuff. Boom, boom. Moon scars, says Omega. Moon scars. Let me know, remind me in like two minutes and I'll alt tab and look it up, but we're almost done with the run. Are you gonna get true ending or just regular says Lydia Waffles? If you're talking about Blasphemous, I, I I literally don't know. I would just, I would play the game and get whatever ending I got, because I don't know anything about it. Lydia says, I have 100% enter the gungeon. Yeah, you got all of the, all the unlocks. Nice. Sour Lemonade says, kill the crows. Jelly Twitter says, play Wild Guns SNES. I don't have an SNES. I also don't have one of those light guns. I 
Admittedly, I don't know if it's a light gun game. It sounds like a light gun game. All right, well, there you go. <laughs> That was the easiest no-hit run I've ever had. That was that was incredibly satisfying and easy. So there's one. Oh. I mean, I haven't we haven't no-hit run since coming back to Gunja. I think I, I previously I made it to the Lich and then got hit on the Lich fight, so we didn't break it up at the very end there. But there we go, you know, all you need is, uh, you know, Metronome, Infinite Ammo, and then Polaris, and then you're, you're set. There's the Polaris, it's red instead of blue, orange instead of blue. Fantastic run, what can I say? What, is this game supposed to be hard or something? For now! For everyone on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. Like the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. Check me out on Twitch for when I go live. Support the channel at the links below in the video description. And I hope to see you here again for the next run of Enter the Gungeon.